Hi everyone, welcome back to Faraday Academy and welcome to the first video in a brand new Python series on Python basics. I hope you enjoy this video and learn something about the Python REPL and why it is so widely used and useful. And don't forget, if you have any questions or feedback for me, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this type of content, then I hope you subscribe to my channel because I will be publishing a lot more of these types of videos. Today I want to talk about the Python REPL, which stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. It is Python's interactive shell environment, which you can use from the terminal or another command line application. It basically lets you use or try out Python syntax without too much effort, like creating a whole file and then having to run it. Before you get started, you're going to need to have Python installed and check to make sure that it's version three. You can check this by typing Python into your system and then dash dash version. Now, if this comes back with an error, that means you don't have Python installed and you will need to do that before following along with this video. I will leave a link in the description below on how to get Python set up on your local machine. If you have a different version of Python, such as Python 2 installed, which may have already come installed on your operating system, you will have to install Python 3. And the link that I'm going to provide in the description will have that information. At this point, it's the year 2020, Python 3 has been out for 12 years, and there's really no reason to use Python 2 while you are learning or building new applications. So you should go ahead and install Python on your system and make sure that it's version 3. If just the term Python by itself doesn't show that you have version 3, you can also use Python 3 and then dash dash version. Because many systems are set up where this Python keyword points to version 2, and if you want to access version 3, you'll have to do Python 3. Either way, these will both work the same way. So how do I access the REPL? By using whatever command points to Python version 3, which in my case is Python or Python 3, and then I hit enter. At the top again, it shows my version, and you will notice that my prompt has changed. There are now three right angle brackets here that replace the information I had here, which showed which directory I was in in the computer. With these three angle brackets, it now shows that I am inside the Python REPL. So why is it called a REPL? Let's break it down step by step. The R stands for read, which means it reads user input. Let's say two plus one. When I hit enter, it will evaluate that input and then it will print out a response, which is three. That is the read evaluate print. And then it gives me another prompt so I can do it again, which is what L or loop stands for in REPL. So why would you use the REPL? It's a really good place to quickly practice concepts that you are learning in Python. If you are learning variables, for example, you can go ahead and create any type of variable, hit enter, and now the string Gwen is stored in the variable name, and I can retrieve that. As I said before, a lot of programmers use the REPL for testing out small pieces of code or expressions quickly. You can use any type of standard Python syntax in the REPL, for example, making a list and then sorting the list. And you can also use the print command to print. If you have typed a lot of things here and you want to clear this and give you a fresh screen to type on, it's convenient to use the control L command. So I hit control and then L and it clears it. This is one control command that is not different on a Mac Control L will work in any Python REPL. You can also import modules from Python in the REPL. For example, the random module from the Python standard library. Now we have access to random, so I can use a method like random integer, say zero to five. And now I have access to the random module until I exit the interpreter. There is another function provided to you here called help, which will give you details about any Python keyword or module you pass into it. For example, I could do help and the Boolean true, and it gives me all of the information for that keyword. When I hit the letter Q, it exits the help page. If I want help on a module, I can just pass in the module. Let's say random since we've imported it. 
Now you can see it gives me quite a bit of information about the random module. If I want to see more, I can scroll down with the arrow keys or I can press the space bar and it scrolls down by pages. I can again hit Q to quit. There is another built-in function called dir, which is also very helpful because it lists the attributes and methods associated with any object in Python. So again, I can pass random and I can look through all these methods and attributes and find the randint method that I used before. Something else that you will find useful inside of the REPL are Python's tracebacks, which show you any errors that come up while it is evaluating your code. So I'm going to make two variables here. One is a number, and let's make this one a string. And now I will try to add these together. And you can see it gives me a traceback of what went wrong in the execution of this line. It says, hey, you can't add 5 to A. This is a completely different type. It's a type error, unsupported addition of integer and string. You can see there are other types of errors as well. Let's put Z equals ABC. And now I get a name error because Python thinks that since we didn't wrap ABC in quotes, it must be a variable. So it's looking for a variable named ABC instead of a string. So it's letting us know, hey, this variable doesn't exist. So you should check on this line and look for what went wrong. All right, one more error. Let's try this one. Print out a name. And now it says I have a syntax error because I'm missing parentheses to call the print function. And then it gives me some useful advice. Did you mean to type in this? Which is actually what I did mean to type in. So now I'm going to do print Gwen and now it works. Awesome. These error types can be really helpful while you're testing out your code in the REPL. You can also do multi-line blocks in the REPL. Let's say we want to make a statement. If two is less than three followed by a colon and I hit enter and now it's giving me these three dots, which means it's not going to evaluate until I finish this statement. So let me type something else here. Print two. So here's another type of error, indentation error. Because Python uses indented syntax, it's expecting this print statement to be indented inside of the if block. So let me try that again. I'll hit enter and now I'll indent by the recommended four spaces and now I'll do print two. Hit enter. Now it's giving me a blank line in case I want to type something else. But since I don't, I'm just going to hit enter again so it will evaluate. And it prints out two because two is in fact less than three. You can also use these multi-line blocks for functions and classes. So those are the practical concepts to get you started. Now I want to show you just a few more things about the Python REPL. There is a poem called The Zen of Python, which is built into the REPL, and you can access it by typing import this. If you stick around in the Python community, you will probably hear this Zen of Python poem referenced frequently. It's basically a collection of short lines that define the essence of Python and good coding practices. One thing to note is that in the Python interpreter, you can't use regular terminal commands. For example, I can't now say Python dash dash version. I get an error because I'm in a completely different environment right now. So how do you get out of the Python shell? You cannot use the regular control C that you traditionally use to stop things from running in the terminal because you just get this keyboard interrupt message since it's not recognized in the Python interpreter. To quit the interpreter, you have to use the exit function. Call it and hit enter. And now you are back in your regular command line environment. As you can see with the changing of the prompt here. And now I can use regular terminal commands again, like Python, dash dash version, etc. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that you learned something from this video. And if you did, I encourage you to share this video as it helps me out a lot being an online content creator. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to support my channel, then there are some links in the description below that explain how to do that. Thanks so much for your time, and I really hope to see you in the next video. Take care.